this talk is basically going to talk about terrorism some and talk about the Planned Parenthood terrorist attack, which is how the women who are suffering from those attacks are viewing it. According to a New York Times article on, tw on December 3rd, they asked the question, quote, how often do mass shootings occur? The answer is, quote, on average, every day records show. In fact, to date this year, 462 people have died and 1,314 have been wounded in these attacks. Police killings over the, the last year have shown three deaths per day amounting to nearly a thousand people since the beginning of the year. This is a separate entity and, and number of people from what we talked about in these other attacks. In November, two terrorist attacks took place that need to be mentioned. On November 15th, James Clark was murdered by Minneapolis police. And then a second terrorist attack occurred November 27th, several days after a mass racist terrorist shot at Black Lives Matter protesters in Minneapolis, wounding five African American men. The victims were just outside the fourth precinct where there have been continuous protests since the murder of Clark. And I should add, and today, the police took down that encampment that had been there for since, since they started it, which was several weeks, and dismantled all their equipment and took it away. So the, the people are saying that they'll be out there in some form, but they actually took it apart. It was similar to what happened in Occupied Wall Street several years ago. In the same month, a right-wing terrorist attack at Planned Parenthood a facility in Colorado Springs, this so-called, quote, lone gunman armed with an AK-47 killed three people and wounded nine in a five-hour standoff with police. This is domestic terrorism. If this had been an African-American man, the cops would have shot first and killed him. But this was a white male who carried out his deadly attack and was arrested without any incident or any shooting. Who were the dead in this attack? Jennifer Markovsky, a Hawaiian mother of two who was accompanying a friend to the clinic, an African-American father of two and an army veteran, and a white police officer, also a father of two. If this had been a terrorist from another country or a migrant, the U.S. as well as the rest of the racist imperialist countries would have used to allow them to enter their domain. There would have been a rabid racist attack on this per perpetrator and he would have been shot and killed. As we just saw what happened in San Bernardino, California, and uh, Tony is going to cover that in his report, so I'm just mentioning it, but he'll be going over that. Wall Street and its partners in Congress espouse white supremacy and male supremacy. Congress has carried out an unrelenting anti-war campaign to defund and shut down Planned Parenthood, a health care provider to millions of low-income women. This right-wing campaign is based on racism and sexism, two pillars of capitalism. It encourages racists and fascists to plan domestic terror attacks. According to a www.globalpost.com article, quote, white Americans are the biggest terror threat in the United States, end quote. This is based on a study by a New American Foundation. This is a Washington-based research organization who did a review of, quote, terror, unquote, attacks on U.S. soil since September 11, 2001 and found most of these attacks were carried out by radical anti-government groups or white supremacist, supremacists. In fact, 19 out of 26 of these attacks were carried out by right-wing terrorists. Attacks by right-wing groups get little coverage by the news media. For example, well, the Sikh temple in Wisconsin where six people were killed in 2012 was carried out by a man associated with neo-Nazi groups. 
Global Post defines terrorism, quote, ideological violence. The New American Foundation took a narrow view of what is terror, terror attack. They excluded the Sandy Hook or the Aura uh, Colorado movie theater shooting, both in 2012. In addition, the three Muslim students murdered in North Carolina in 2015 were not counted. However, the shooting of nine people at the AME Church in South Carolina was included. The shooter made it clear that he believed that white people are superior to black. <clears throat> The right wing has used bogus video smearing campaign against Planned Parenthood that has influenced conservative politicians and has exposed sexism in Congress. In addition, it has increased the violence against women's health clinics and abortion providers, which has been reported in media documents. For example, this year, July, a clinic in the Chicago suburb of Aurora, Illinois, reported an attempted arson. In August, firefighters found a burning car at the construction site of a future clinic in New Orleans. And in September, a clinic in Pullman, Washington, was set ablaze in the middle of the night. The end of September, somebody broke a window at a Thousand Oak Clinic in California and threw a makeshift bomb inside. Advocates of women's health are demanding more coverage of these attacks from mainstream media and full investigation from the Department of Justice. NARAL, the pro-choice organization's president, Elise Hogue, says, where is this outrage, quote, and continues, the media needs to report these incidents as what they are that they are domestic terrorism, and continues. Also, NARAL has launched a petition calling on the Department of Justice to find the perpetrators. The problem for Planned Parenthood health providers and for Hogue is that American news consumers, meaning the people in the street, seem desensitized to the violence against abortion providers. Feminist Majority Foundation reports 2014 the percentage of women's health clinics that have received threats of violence has doubled. According to the pro-abortion rights website RH Reality, quote, radical anti-choice activists have been emboldened by the GOP uh, legislative attacks on reproductive rights, end quote. Since 1993, eight doctors and clinic staff members have been murdered for working to provide abortion. <coughs> Dr. George Tiller of Wichita, Kansas was the most recent example in 2009. Fox News and its ilk continue to push false accusations against Planned Parenthood. <laughs> Katie Calabush, the author of an op -ed, uh, article in Colorado, in Colorado attacks saying, as long as clinic, uh, she is a longtime clinic escort and a founding member of the Clinic Vest Project. And this is something that's been instituted apparently in a number of w women's clinics across the country. They not only have put in bulletproof glass in their clinics, but they're providing, they're recommending that people use bulletproof vests going to and from work and I think in the facility as well. And she says, I've told, spent untold hours connecting health centers, both Planned Parenthood locations and independent providers with resources, help start new programs and advocate for protective local laws. There's been an increase in requests for assistance because of the spike in the attacks on clinics and providers. According to an article in Workers World by Sue Davis, Planned Parenthood is one of the major health care providers for women. This includes reproductive health care, contraception, abortion, prenatal care, counseling, screening tests, and treatments to 2.7 million low-income families. This would affect the this would affect African American, Latino, and immigrant women who reside in the US from around the globe. In an article defending Planned Parenthood from the right wing attacks by Kathy Durkin, also in Workers' World, both these are in Workers' World, 
Anti-abortion groups have circulated deceptive videos claiming that the group gets profits from selling fetal tissue and that they are guilty of, quote, infanticide, unquote. A false claim. The right wing is pushing local state laws to limit a woman's right to choice. About half of the Planned Parenthood's patients are on Medicaid. The article points out that 28 House Republicans threatened defunding Planned Parenthood on the, uh, uh, using grounds for shutting down the government. Well, the Democrats said that no such bill would ever get passed, and Obama said he would veto it. This was in the Huffington Post in September. In September 2015, when activists and clinics delivered petitions to Washington and a statement that said, I, quote, I stand with Planned Parenthood, these petitions, they had 2.4 million signatures that were turned in. And they were on the same day, September 29, 2015, there were 300, over 300 pro-choice rallies and other events around the country when they took these petitions in. The National Organization for Women, now President Terry O'Neill, in a statement on the shooting in Colorado Springs said, quote, Let's be clear, this was an act of domestic terrorism. terrorism. Now calls for a full federal investigation into the shooter and any others who may be connected with this act. The statement continued, phony videos have circulated falsely accusing Planned Parenthood of illegal actions. These videos across the line, cross the line that continues of decency, humanity, and legality. But instead of renouncing them, extremist members of Congress, their staffers, operatives, and even Supreme Court Justice's wife relently promote these videos to whip up frenzy of hate against women's health providers, a form of domestic violence, of terrorism. Women, <coughs> in Chris Hamill's article, which is what I opened with the information originally. She continues, the ruling class has allowed racist, sexist, bigoted billionaire Donald Trump to become, to come as a so-called serious contender for the Republican presidential nomination, and who is constantly in the headlines of the bourgeois, bourgeois press. Not because they think he will win, but because it's whipping up racism, sexism, anti-immigrant, anti-migrant, and anti-LGBTQ uh, uh, you know, response, and, what the cap and this is what the capitalists need in this period to keep people divided and conquered. Colorado Springs is a reactionary military town, home to U.S. Air Force Academy, command of Central uh, North American Aerospace Defense, and other military operations. It is also the epicenter of reactionary evangelist Christians who totally oppose abortion rights and many forms of birth control and rights for women. It is clear weapons of, ma of war, military firearms are normal in U.S. civilian capitalist society. Not only are the weapons of war used by the military, but they are sold to local p police departments and are also in the hands of civilians. The terrorism that is aimed at the Black Lives Matter and Planned Parenthood is meant to intimidate activists and break their fight, fighting spirit. Repression breathes resistance. Black Lives Matter is leading the struggle is a, in the forefront against racism, sexism, and all forms of repression. The struggle of, uh, uh, and the support for women's rights and building solidarity between workers and oppressed people in the U.S. and the world, around the world, is what is in progress now.